Welcome back to the channel, guys. We're finally getting around to looking at the final look at this incredibly amazing kind of space age material. No steel in its construction. Teravantium knife done by Terrain365. This is the Invictus. So let's turn this around and take a look at it from above. Guys, we're finally getting back around to this Terrain 365 Invictus. Now, I'm going to give you guys some quick specs and then we'll do some size comparison and we'll get into it. But this is a very unique knife because it's absolutely rust proof. So we'll talk about that after we get through some specs. So what you're looking at here is 8.125 inches overall length with a blade length of 3.5 inches done in teravantium, which is dendritic cobalt. Uh, it is a blade stock thickness of 0.15 inches and it is a frame lock coming in at 4.5 ounces. Now, this is 100% steel, no steel in this construction, which means you will get zero rust. Uh, you will get no iron oxide forming on this, no rust, no oxidation on this. Dendritic cobalt, titanium, all titanium hardware, and ceramic bearings. So extra specs, let's get a couple knives out for a visual comparison. First knife's what's in my pocket right now. The Trivesa Volans that came in from Jared. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome knife that you can see. Uh, yeah, a little bit bigger. Your next knife, as always, the Benchmade 940, which is a knife most of you guys should have as a good size reference in your head. And then your final knife is the Chris Reese. The Benza Large 21, another well-known knife that you should be able to see a size reference. This is this is a not a huge knife. It uh, definitely does not feel very big. So let's get this out of the way and start talking about all the cool stuff about this knife. So I don't want to rehash a bunch of stuff that another channel did. Jared did a very in-depth uh, sharpening and everything on this knife and talked about some stuff. I will say that I had a kind of a different experience with this. This held its edge forever. His factory edge didn't last as long as mine. Uh, this held up incredibly well. Cutting cardboard, I really didn't have any problems. The only material I've had that held its edge longer than this was ceramic. So um, you're looking at this beautiful non-steel, non-ferrous blade done in teravantium. It's in a spear point fashion. Big, attractive fuller down the middle. Nice, clean markings on this. This is a very attractive knife. This reminds me a lot of the triple aught designs, and I believe it's because they were probably designed by the same guy. So this Invictus has got a really cool look to it when it's it's got this like dipped out area, which I dig. It's just another line that you get to see there. Um, pretty decent jimping, not super, super sharp, but very good. Um, as far as blade thickness behind the edge, it is a little thicker. This is a fairly thick grind on this. It comes down. I understand why, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. And then you have these beautifully done titanium handles that have got some beautifully done, uh, milling on them, clean and cleanly done. Now, this knife was actually made in three different countries. And I learned this because I watched Jared's channel. Um, the blade is made here in the United States. The handles and all of the hardware are made in Japan. And then all of that is shipped somewhere in China and assembled and fit up. And they did a very, very good job on this lock. I'm sorry. Uh, the blade centering is perfect. You've got this beautiful backspacer, which they've offered you an option for a lanyard without making a big, ugly hole in what is a very, very attractive knife in hand really comfortable. The pocket clip is just about perfect. In and out of pocket, there is no grab or pinch because that's nice and chamfered. Access to the lock bar is great. They didn't do a lot of material removal down. As a matter of fact, they didn't do any. It's flat across, but they did just about perfect in opening that up and making it look attractive. And that's actual functional in there. Um, the action on it is nice and smooth and free. You can thumb flip or you can slow roll it and then you've got an adequate adequate sharpening choil up here to keep you from mashing into stuff and banging into this and chipping your stones or marring the finish on your handles now this is completely rust proof 
I told you we'd get to that. Now this, because it has no steel in it, it cannot rust. It's done in dendritic cobalt, which is a material that's been around for a while. I'll put a link to a site that you guys can see if you want to look up about dendritic cobalt right here. That way we're not having to dig into it too much. But it is a very, very interesting material in that it is easy to sharpen. It performs like steel. It's not soft like some of the knit now, like SM100 and things like that. And it sharpens up just like you would expect on a regular steel blade. Now, there are some downsides we'll talk about on the other side about the material. But as far as the knife itself, it is absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, I used this for a very long time. It did not have the edge give up on me. It still just screamed through cardboard for a very long time. But I will say it did not feel real sharp. Um, and it still, even with the edge that's on it, does not feel real sharp. Um, it it kind of has a weirdness to it where it doesn't feel sharp, but it still cuts really well. And it is very, very toothy for the grit it's at, which is something that Jared also mentioned. This is about a thousand grit and it really feels a lot more like about a 400 grit edge, not a thousand grit edge. So um, the burr, burr process on it is completely different. Go watch Jared's video if you want to hear about all that. So Everything about this has been really cool, but there are some downsides to this, and I don't think I would ever buy one of these knives. I'm really enamored with the idea of it, but I don't think I would buy one of these. So let's turn this around. You guys listen to a quick spot from Coffee Brand Coffee, and I will tell you about the bad things. That no one likes to watch ads in the middle of a video. I don't like putting them in, but I do know that I got to support what I do here. So I partnered with companies that I know I can trust. And today's sponsor is Coffee Brand Coffee. They're delivering quality coffee, freshly roasted on demand, ground to order and delivered to your door. And they're not doing anything political. So you don't have to worry about a company that you're that you're supporting, that is supporting causes that you might not agree with because they don't support any causes. They just simply take the money and put it back into making a better product. So I would appreciate if you both support their new small business and my channel by checking out Coffee Brand Coffee and looking at their offerings. Use the link below and my coup or my coupon code crazy sharp on their website it's crazy sharp all one word capital c capital s let's get back to this so now i'm going to say that some of these things are uh the same things that jared has, had talked about um the edge on it is weird um because deburring was very difficult and the edge kind of didn't ever really do what i was expecting it to having been used to sharpening steels uh, this did not sharpen the same way as regular material. So if you're looking for something that's going to be the same as a steel blade, you may want to steer away from this, uh, unless you absolutely need something. Like if you work in, in a boat or you work in the ocean might be something you're looking for, but it was kind of weird to sharpen and the burr removal. The only reason I knew anything about this was because when I got ready to sharpen, I had to go back and watch Jared's video. And that's, I tried to sequester myself from videos. The other thing, pocket clip's a little bit long. It's very, very comfortable and it's a nice pocket clip, but I'm, like I said in a couple other videos, I am much, much more inclined to want a shorter pocket clip. This just has a tendency to catch on more stuff. And I think if you look, close on this you can see where i've dinged into the door panels or the, the door catch and stuff like that um it also has a tendency to catch on uh seat belts i do love however how it's attached next thing i think i would have been happier with everything being matched with this matte finish i would have wanted matte that's just an aesthetic thing um there's some downsides to the material uh, dendritic cobalt is a lot more brittle than steel. It does not have the, the actual toughness. So that you're much more likely to chip your edge on this than you are with others. Now, I do know that Jared did a lot of chopping tests, but I specifically have heard people say that their edges chipped way easier on this than like a, a comparable, comparable steel. Um, lockstick. This thing has bad lockstick. Now, I know Jared says his came and went. I have had to put... Uh, some people like to use magic marker. I typically will just take a pencil and draw on the the lock face of the blade, the lock interface there. It does help, but you can hear it still. Even with that, lock stick has been an issue since the day it showed up. Um, and then the final thing is, as much as I like the the 
uh, fact that you can slow roll it, the action is still a little soft. Uh, I could easily take care of that by taking it apart and giving it more lock bar tension. That would help stiffen that action up. But all that's going to do is exacerbate, that's a big fancy word for make it worse, the lock stick that you already have because the more tension you have, the harder it slams over. So all in all, it's a really cool knife. It's a cool concept. If you're into something where you're just gonna need a knife, like say you're on a boat and you're cutting line and stuff constantly, uh, it, it's something that's gonna be great for you because it does strop up very easily and it doesn't seem to lose its tooth on the strop. So if you're using like a diamond impregnated strop with, with you know, proper emulsion, you know, diamond emulsion paste in it, I think it would hold up for a very long time between sharpenings. That's what I have noticed. It holds that tooth, but it's not going to be a very refined edge. If you're looking for something that's nice and smooth and that hair popping, hair whittling, polished edge that you get on stuff, this is not something you're gonna look for. It just does not seem to do that as well as it does just staying toothy and really just tearing through material. So. With that being said, this knife is going to find its way back to my little buddy Nico so he can finally have his knife back because it's been here for almost a year. So uh, that should tell you, I did a lot of testing on this. So I'll put a link, if I can find a link to it. The other thing, the other bad thing, last bad thing, it's it's pretty expensive. It's like the last time I looked, I think they were $380. Hang on, let's just make yeah. sure. $385 currently out of stock. It's uh, it's definitely not a cheap knife. So that would be the last of the bad things. So guys, thanks for hanging out. That's the end of this one. Let's turn this around, do some final thoughts, and I'll tell you about some ways you can support the channel. So yeah, it's, there is a lot of good things about this knife. Uh, I love the design. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous design. I like the way it cuts some things. I'm, I'm kind of impressed with the material, but the big takeaway is this is a niche use knife. Like really, when it comes down to it for most knife collectors, it's just gonna be something cool to add to the collection, or it's going to be something that someone that works in a very corrosive environment that ruins steels. Like say you work in an environment where you're always wet. D2 is not the steel for you. A lot of the other steels, crew wear, some of those other steels, not the steel for you. This might be up your alley. It's going to be completely rust proof. So there may be some more videos about this. I may borrow this in a future time. Make sure you go check out Jared's video that I mentioned several times throughout. It's it's an in-depth look at the sharpening. I don't want to rehash something that another channel's already done. I'll just point you their direction. So that's it on this one, guys. I love you all. Keep it clean. And that's not how we do this right yet. That's it on this one, guys. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. Please try to tell me why. It's the best thing you can do for the channel. If you want to support the channel financially, I put a coffee brand coffee ad in. I also have got Tempered Trail as another sponsor. Uh, go check out what Nathan has over there at Tempered Trail. He's doing hand sewn walls, kilties for your boots, the best laces you're ever going to find because they are pretty much indestructible. Um, coffee brand coffee, Tempered Trails, Fair and Forge Knife Works and Rosecraft Blades all share a coupon code. Use the link for the coffee. It makes it, your life a lot easier. But they all share the coupon code. Crazy Sharp across the board. You save 5% at every one of those vendors. Um, another way you can do it is I have an Amazon store down below. Anything you're going to purchase on Amazon, please use that link. Pin it to your browser. Use it for all of your Amazon shopping. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout, and it definitely supports the channel. Um, and the final way is I have a membership, which is a lot of fun. I wish more people would join the membership, not just because it makes money, because it is more fun. We have multiple things that you guys get as benefits. Everyone gets early access to videos when I can make them available. Everyone gets er uh, exclusive content when I do it. Uh, the premium and base, well, I'm sorry, everybody has access to the Gilded server, which is where I do giveaways for the premium and baseline guys. And the premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series here on YouTube. Guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I'll see you in the next video.